everybody, I'm Josh with Northern Frogger and this is my Exoterra Frogs & Co Dart Frog Terrarium. Now I can hardly believe it, but it's been over two years since I first set this tank up and a lot of you have asked for an update. So this is my long-term review and I'm going to try to answer all of your questions. Now if you haven't seen the original videos about this tank, I will link those down below. So you can go check those out if you haven't seen them already, but if you have seen those, you might remember that I did kind of an unconventional substrate on this tank using just the fluval substratum as a single combined uh, drainage layer and substrate. And I'm going to talk a bit about my experience using that as well. And full disclosure, Exoterra did give me this tank for free as part of their initial promotional campaign, um, but they're not sponsoring this video. Uh, they don't even know I'm making it, so all of the thoughts and opinions here are going to be my own. So should you buy a Frogs & Co terrarium in 2023? Uh, stick around to find out. Okay, so this is the Frogs & Co terrarium up here, and I'm going to be comparing it to the uh, kind of standard or original Exoterra terrarium down here and there's three main differences between these terrariums that i'm going to be talking about today um, that's the redesigned front door uh, the redesigned top and the inclusion of a built-in drain on the frogs and co tank so let's start with the most obvious and that's that new redesigned front these old original ones had the double door with a fairly tall substrate dam here frogs and co tanks have a, a one-piece single door and a much shorter front substrate dam and some of you have asked me if this is too short. Um, I'd say it's borderline. For the substrate I'm using on this tank, uh, just the single uh, fluval substratum layer, it's plenty high enough for that. Um, I can see how if you're doing like a full drainage layer and substrate layer, how this is maybe a little bit short, uh, but I still think it's fine. Um, you can just kind of do your drainage layer and then have a, a shallow substrate layer up front. Uh, you usually want it kind of sloping from front to back. Um, with it being higher in the back anyway. So I do think that's fine. I actually prefer it to the original design. You can see it takes up um, pretty much like a third of the front. This one does have a pretty thick drainage layer and the top of the substrate is still a good two inches below uh, the bottom of the door here. So this original one uh, was way too tall of a front dam here. This Frogs & Co one is uh, better. Um, it could have been like maybe one centimeter taller and then that probably would have been perfect. And this is the 18 inch cube version, but they do have another version that's 24 inches tall instead of 18. And I believe on that one, the front dam is a little bit higher too. So that one's probably about perfect. So next I want to talk about the top of the terrarium. Um, now I run most of mine um, with a custom top. You can see I've got a piece of glass cut that sits on top. This is siliconed in place, but then it's still got um, about an inch and a half of mesh at the front here and I just silicone all that in place as well And then the Miss King nozzle goes through the front uh, mesh piece here And this is what an unmodified uh, top looks like on a standard tank um, It's just got this uh, double section screen top with these four little latches to hold it in place um, and this whole thing will lift out. Now you don't actually have to silicone in a top like this. You could just get some pieces of glass or even uh, like plastic food wrap and lay it across the screen uh, to block part of the opening just to be able to keep your humidity up. So as you can see, the top on the Frogs & Co tank is quite a bit different. We have a glass panel um, up here and then this uh, screen portion in the back here. And as you can see, I've got this partially blocked off with uh, like just some uh, plastic food wrap, just because this is a little bit too much ventilation for my climate. Um, it dries the tank out way too fast. So I do have to have this partially blocked off. As you can see, there's a fly crawling along the back here. Um, this terrarium is not quite as fly proof as I would like, but I'm going to talk more about that in a bit. One thing that I don't like a ton about this tank is how narrow this glass strip is. Um, it kind of makes your lighting options a little bit limited. Like if I'm using a bulb style light like this, um, it's really not ideal for this shape of the glass. So I would have liked to see um, a little bit bigger of this glass strip for the light area. Um, although it's not a big deal, most of my lights that I'm moving to now are kind of the LED strip lights. So um, this works pretty well for those, but it would just still be nice to have a little bit bigger uh, lighting section here just to give you a little bit more option. The screen is probably gonna be a little bit much for most people keeping dart frogs. I think it's really good for tree frogs. They need a little bit more ventilation. Um, this would also be great for a lot of the dwarf geckos, I think, because you could put your like your heat lamp and your UVB up here in this screen portion too. I think this would be a pretty good size for one of the smaller dome fixtures here. Now, if you look under here, just gonna make sure there's no frogs hanging around the top, um, but this opens up. This is sometimes a little bit finicky, I find. <laughs> yeah, but if you push this, this flap uh, opens up and then you can use that as a handle 
and the lid kind of hinges out of the way here. There's a space in the back here to run uh, cables or hoses, like for a waterfall pump or a misting system. It's pretty hard to see, but I do have a hose for a misting system. Uh, coming through here and it does come with rubber grommets that um, that the hose can go through it seals it off pretty good but it's not quite enough for fruit flies so I've actually used a little bit of uh, black electrical tape um, on top of those grommets to seal them off even more so then coming from those grommets at the back there there is kind of these little clips or this channel to run a hose for the misting system it's got these holes up here that are designed for the uh, monsoon mist nozzles but uh, you can see i've just kind of twist tied a mist king nozzle in there um, just to kind of keep all of my misting nozzles consistent um, but yeah other than that um, i have no complaints about the top really it's still got a flat lip along the inside here so if you did want to take it and replace this entire top with a custom glass top uh, that is still an option too it does look nicer than the original top i think um, my one real complaint is that i wish this glass area was a little bit wider and the ventilation area uh, was a little bit smaller but that's kind of partially due to the fact that i live in a very dry climate so i can't have too much ventilation um, and i would like some more flexibility with lighting options up here, but it would have been really nice to see uh, some sort of like adjustable, like built-in adjustable vents or something for ventilation on a frog tank, but um, that might've been a lot more expensive to make or whatever. So pretty easy to adjust it yourself with just a, another piece of glass or some plastic food wrap or something like that as well. So it's not really a big deal. It's not quite as fly proof as I would like it to be, as I mentioned before. Um, those grommets do a decent job, but I did have to tape them to kind of keep the flies down a little bit. And I think they can still kind of get out through these cracks in a few places. Um, it doesn't quite really seal in there quite as well as I'd like it to. I think you can almost put um, like some weather stripping foam or something along these inside corners and that might cut down a lot of the fly escapes. I don't think the top is quite the only problem either. It might be hard to show but um, this gap between the door and the top trim, um, flies can definitely get through right there. And then as in this corner as well, there's a little bit of a gap. I think some of the smaller flies can make it through this front vent as well, um, but usually the flies crawl up, so it's not that big a deal. All right, so the last major uh, feature upgrade that I wanna talk about with this tank is the addition of a built-in drain. Uh, so down on this bottom panel here, there's a pre-drilled hole and the tank comes with um, the bulkheads and the hoses and all the fittings you need. Um, so you can see you've got the hose running out the side here that comes from that drain. And then I've just got that kind of tucked down here and there's a valve on the end of this hose. So to drain it, um, I just have a bucket and all you gotta do is open this valve. And then you just wait till it's done draining, close the valve back up, tuck it back into place here and that tank is drained. Um, so that's much easier than my typical method of siphoning out um, with like a primer bulb thing. So really like that drain, really nice that it comes with that. I did have somebody ask me before if, uh, if it was a problem that there wasn't really a screen on the drain uh, bulkhead area um, and if it, the hose would just get clogged up with substrate, um, which doesn't really happen at all. As you can see in here, there's like some fine particles um, but there is, there's not really a mesh on the drain, but there's kind of a grill, um, which is enough to keep out most of the big particles. And then any tinier particles just kind of get washed down with the rest of the water. So um, yeah, there's some tiny little grains from the substrate in there and you can see it's kind of tinted a bit dark, but uh, for the most part, the substrate doesn't really come through. And as you can see, like in the hose here, it's perfectly clean. There's not really any substrate getting gunked up in there at all. So. Uh, yeah, this is all working really well, um, even though this has been uh, running for over two years now. So um, now I know a lot of you have also asked me about this substrate, um, so it's not really part of the tank itself, but uh, I know a lot of you have been curious. I might do a full video talking about it, but um, it has been um, pretty much fine. Like I have no complaints about the substrate at all. But most of the plants that I have growing in here are kind of growing epiphytically. Like there's a lot of moss here and then I've got some bromeliads and this like mini ficus pamilla that's just kind of growing into the background and stuff. But um, I have had Brahms growing right into this substrate. I have had um, some other like the, the monsteras. Um, I've had some philodendrons. Um, this tank has gone through a few cycles of pruning and growing out and stuff. So I've had a few different plants in here and 
Uh, yeah, I've got really no complaints about the substrate. Plants are fairly easy to pull out uh, compared to a, a typical substrate. The only problem is like some of the substrate will be stuck to the roots. So every time you pull a plant out, you will lose a little bit of the substrate. But And then I still just, every once in a while, probably needs to be done again soon, but I just top it up with uh, some fresh leaf litter. The substrate is not really breaking down. That was kind of one of my worries is that the, the pellets would just kind of slowly mush up because the stuff is kind of soft. Um, it's almost like dirt and pellet form. Um, you can like squish it between your fingers pretty easily. So I was worried that over time this was just gonna kind of compress and turn into like a solid mud layer, but the substrate is kind of held up and those pellets have held their shape. So um, it hasn't compressed. There still allows for some aeration in there and the roots to get down there and everything. Um, it still drains out really well. So um, yeah, pretty happy with the substrate so far, um, two years in. I think I would, I would consider doing it again. It is a little bit pricey to buy as much of the stuff as you need. Although once you factor in like the drainage and all the different stuff that goes in to like make a, a good bioactive substrate, it's probably not that much more expensive, honestly. So I would say if you're thinking about trying this stuff, it's uh, it makes a pretty good option. I would put something over top of it so the frogs aren't directly on that just because it can kind of break down and um, get like little grains on their skin and stuff like that. So. I would definitely cover it with uh, leaf litter um, and or a good layer of moss or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. It's uh, I think slightly more, more expensive most of the time, um, which might be worth it. It's got some bigger pieces of glass in here. Having the drain and like the extra parts for the bulkhead and stuff like that um, adds a little bit of the cost. So I kind of understand where it comes from. Oh uh, yeah, so overall, I think these tanks are pretty good. A couple minor things I would change, but uh, as long as you can get them at a reasonable price, I would probably try to uh, get the frogs and co over the standard ones. And you can always do a couple modifications to make them a little bit more fly proof or to adjust the ventilation as you need it. Um, and as long as you don't have like a super flighty species that you're worried about jumping out where the, the big single door is gonna be an issue. Um, I'd say like that's one of the few cases where I would stick with a double door situation. As long as you're careful and you kind of check around the edges of the tank, uh, try to find out where the frogs are ahead of time or at least where they're not um, before you open the door, um, it's pretty manageable to, uh, to mitigate the risk of them jumping out. So at the end of the day, the question is, would I still recommend the frogs and Cotrarium after two years? And the answer is yes, I definitely would. It's not quite perfect in my opinion, but the couple of issues I have with it are pretty minor. And even though it is a little bit more expensive than the original Exoterra, uh, the added features you get, I think, do make it worth it. I really enjoy the bigger uh, one-piece front glass for the improved viewing area. And even though that front dam is maybe a little bit too short, that's not really a big deal in my opinion. And I really love uh, the convenience of having that built-in drain. Now, I'm not totally sold on the top design for this one. Even though compared to the original Exoterra, I think it looks a lot better. There are a couple uh, small things that I would change if I could design it myself. Um, like I would like to see that wider strip for the light, uh, better fly proofing and maybe some adjustable ventilation. Uh, but those things really aren't deal breakers since the original top uh, doesn't have any kind of adjustable ventilation either and it's definitely not fly proof either. And I understand that adding those things would increase the cost even further so uh, compared to the original top I do think this is an improvement. And as a whole package I think the Frogs & Co tank is definitely improvement over the original Exoterras uh, for keeping dart frogs at least. Um, I think if you can shop around and find one on sale um, you'll definitely be happy with it. And if you're really on a budget, uh, don't forget to check out the used market. I know it's still possible to find some really good deals on tanks out there as well. But I am curious to know what you guys think as well. So if any of you out there have this tank, uh, let me know down below um, if you agree or disagree or if I missed anything um, or if you have any other thoughts on it. Um, yeah, leave them down in the comments there. Um, or if you have any other questions about this that I missed, uh, let me know. Uh, but yeah, I think that's all I have for you today. So uh, thanks a lot for watching and until next time, happy frogging.